I had to write an essay on something which society um, considers taboo or disgusting, anything I wanted to kind of write about, and I had to try and justify it. And what I was kind of came up with is um, the topic of incest. Society thinks it's disgusting, it's weird, it's odd. Um, so this is my question, really, and I talked about this in my essay. Two sisters. <laughs> you see, it's an odd subject. People, is this a penthouse you know, letter? You've got our attention. <laughs> It's an odd subject. People automatically think it's disgusting. But two sisters, they're in love. You're they off to a good start. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm hoping you'll talk about this and not also say it's disgusting. But um, two sisters, they can't produce children which are disabled. They're in love. And they're not harming anyone. So my question is, apart from saying it's disgusting, weird, and therefore wrong, can you give one good reason as to why two people who are in love and not harming people shouldn't be together? Just one good reason that's not it's disgusting, just like people said against homosexuals. Okay. Yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very clever device to, to make it two sisters. I think that's brilliant. Uh, because, um, and I think that this, this beautifully points up the difference between absolutist morality, where you just say it's disgusting, the yuck factor, um, and um, utilitarian or consequentialist morality. Um, I think you're absolutely right. I can see no reason at all why, uh, why the, these two sisters shouldn't, shouldn't marry if they, if they want to. So, it's another or, great or clip. I suppose if... No, no, I think, I think that, that, that stands, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be great on YouTube, Richard. <laughs> we um, could make it better by just agreeing with him. Well, I, uh, one, one thing I, I would add here is that Disgust as a moral emotion is, is, obviously this is part of our evolutionary inheritance, but it is a very bad machine for, for producing moral wisdom. And, and, and what is disgusting in one context or in one you know, cultural context is uh, often not in another. And I, you know, I'm not, uh, I, I think there is a, a truly universal way of solving the question of how to maximize human well-being. Uh, as it's, not, it's not even to say that there are, there's only one right answer, there, but there, there are certainly wrong answers. There can be many right answers, and there are certainly many wrong answers. And they're wrong not just for you and me and everyone in this room, they're wrong for everybody. You know, cutting the head off your child is a bad way to raise that child to be a, a functional adult. Uh, and so that's one wrong answer number one. Uh, but this, this issue of, of uh, incest, in, in this case, I mean, this is a thought experiment that, that the psychologist Jonathan Haidt has, has used to great effect to produce a phenomenon that he calls moral dumbfounding, where he'll ask, he'll, he'll, he'll produce an example like that, and he'll ask people whether it's right or wrong, and they, they'll have a very strong disgust-based sense that it's wrong, but then when told to give a, a rationale for why it's wrong, they, they basically come up with a, this, this very lawyerly opinion that that is just a, it's a kind of confabulation. You know, it doesn't really, it doesn't really intersect with any kind of moral philosophy. Uh, I think the, the one, other, one other consequentialist point I, I, I would make is that uh, in the local case, it might inf well be not wrong for two people who can't have kids and can't suffer in any way to be you know, prosecuting their, their taboo love for one another, uh, but there's, I think part, part of the consequences are the, just what happens to society, what happens to other relationships, what happens, I mean, there's a, you're, you're in dialogue, you're not in a moral solitude, usually, with your behavior. And um, so, I, I mean, another example is, you know, why, when someone dies, why don't we just chuck their body in the garbage, right? I mean, so it's all the same to them. There, there's, you know, there's no one to suffer that desecration. But the, the point of treating a dead body well is because of all the good it does for the living, right? The, the, the way it honors our relationship with the people we're, we, we still uh, love and, and, and have spent our lives connected to. So, and, some, and some... not just the people in their life, but that individual as well. This, this question's come up to me. Yeah. Sam and I advocate for very al almost identical versions of consequentialism. Uh, if you live in a society where you know that there's a likelihood that your body's just going to be thrown in the trash, 
or that your organs are going to be farmed out and this isn't what you want, you have a particular view. This diminishes the quality of your life while you're living. If you live in a society where you understand that we're going to respect the wishes of people after they're dead, this increases the, the, the well-being of your life while you're living. That is not inconsequential. That's something that you have to consider. It's yeah. not just about the other people in their life. It's about the quality of your life leading up to the, your death. If, if you were living in Logan's Run and you knew the secret, oh, sorry, spoiler, they, they're going to be killed. It, it would change how you lived those years prior to that. And that's, we, we tend to, consequentialists come under fire um, by people who, from my point of view, seem to only be able to look at things myopically as, oh, this is how it affects me right now. And, and like in your example, I don't have any objection to your example, but I'm in agreement with Sam that there may be extenuating circumstances in the complexities of a society that might make it not a good idea. To and slippery slope arguments can be perfect, perfectly good as well. I mean, yeah. The argument against eating human road kills um, would be um, a, a, where, where there's nobody to mourn them. Um, there's probably an argument about against using the phrase even, I would think. That, <laughs> um, it, it, I mean, slip, slippery slope, we have a very good taboo against, against, against cannibalism. Yeah. In the case of the taboo against incest, I, I was about to say, I remember I stopped myself, maybe there's a slippery slope, but I can't actually think of it in that case. Um, I can't think of this case of two sisters marrying what the slippery slope would look like. Well, I think Matt just gave it. If, if behind every closed door there might be two sisters having sex, that would diminish our quality of life while alive. I'm not quite sure that's what I said, but I'll go with it. Yeah.